Oh, we have a school zone. Is, is, it, is school really in session? Good morning, YouTube. This is Cruise Man. Just about to take a little ride. I've got a couple of errands I need to run today. And I thought, what a good time to do a motovlog. It is 74 degrees right now in Carrollton, Texas. In fact, I'm gonna get my phone out and take a picture. 74 degrees in Carrollton, Texas today. Absolutely perfect riding weather this morning. Very little wind and just a perfect day to ride. I just got the bike back together yesterday. I was going to ride yesterday morning, but it uh, started kind of raining a little bit. We've actually had a little rain, and now we've got this, I guess you could call it a coal front moved in. You know, just a couple of weeks ago, it was up in the high 90s. And this is very unseasonably cool weather for us here in Dallas-Fort Worth. So, I am very excited. Actually, it's a little breezier than I thought. I think these are probably about 15 mile an hour winds, but it's not bad. So, just wanted to uh, take a chance to visit with you, update you on some stuff that's going on. I had the bike torn apart originally because I was installing a new product that I was going to do a video for. But as it turns out, uh, I received the wrong version of that product. It was like a pre-production unit. And there were some issues, so I wasn't able to complete the installation and do the video at this time, but it will be coming uh, in the next few weeks, hopefully. I also had another product I was going to be testing and reviewing, but it was kind of a seasonal product, and with all this cool weather we've had the last couple of weeks, and for the foreseeable future anyway, it just uh, wasn't logical to do a video on it right now. So that got put off until probably next spring. I have one more product that I will be testing and reviewing and showing you hopefully within the next week uh, once I get that set up. But while I had the bike all apart, I used that as an opportunity to shoot some video of how I've got all my wiring set up on the bike for all my accessories. I get a lot of emails from those of you out there who are installing some, it could be anything, fog lights or cowl lights or accessory LED lights. And you're always asking me, uh, do, should I use the plug and play connectors from uh, Pathfinder LED? What if I want to add some gold strike lights? Do I add their plug and play connectors? And do I need a show chrome isolator or some other kind of fuse block isolator? I get these questions probably six or seven times a week. I'll get a question like this. So what I've decided to do is make a video specifically talking about how to wire up all your accessories or I, well, let me back up the video is going to tell you how I chose to wire up my accessories there's all kinds of different uh, techniques you can use but when I took my bike apart the other day I took the seat off and as you start adding more and more accessories, you end up with basically almost a rat's nest of wires under there. And not only is it ugly, but it's uh, it could be a safety hazard. You know, the, you know, I had all these Wago connectors, which are great connectors. I've never had a problem with them, but I had them all over the place, and I had wires all over the place, and. The problem you have with when you start adding accessories from different companies, 
every company has their own color scheme for their wiring so some companies use black for a ground wire some use green for a ground wire some use brown for a ground wire some use red for a turn signal light others will use blue for a turn I mean it's just all over the place so I decided to go through all of my accessories of which I have many and I'll talk about that in the video and show you all this and show you a system that I came up with that I think is going to work well for me and really cleaned everything up under the seat and on the bike as far as from a wiring perspective. So from now on when I get an email from those of you who ask me about wiring up accessories I will have a video that I can refer you to and this will be on my YouTube channel. It, it will also be on my 2018 plus Honda Goldwing maintenance video series and there might even be some additional footage there that I won't have in the YouTube video but you'll be able to get a lot of good information from that YouTube video to help you when it comes to uh, laying out designing and uh, attacking this uh, accessory wiring situation on the 2018 to 2020 Honda Goldwing now just as a little bit of preliminary information most of you may already know that you cannot wire up accessories on the Goldwing on the 2018 plus model like we did on the older Goldwings on the previous generation Goldwing 2001 to 2017 or even prior to 2001 if you wanted to add a light or an accessory you could just use a little posi tap connector anywhere in the stream and add that light to that circuit and you as long as it didn't exceed the uh, fuse amp draw uh, you were good to go the problem you have with the newer motorcycles not just the Goldwing but the BMWs and and in I believe Indians and maybe even the Harleys I'm not sure about the Harleys if you if you know this put it in the comments down below but almost all these new motorcycles now have what's called a CAN bus electrical system and everything electrical on your motorcycle and I'm paraphrasing here I'm you know I'm dumbing it down not because I don't think you're smart enough to understand it I'm dumbing it down because I'm not sure I'm smart enough to understand it but basically all of the electronics on the bike are controlled by a computer and so when you have the left turn signal circuit on the motorcycle the computer has an allowance as to how many amps it expects to see drawn on that circuit and if you exceed the amperage on any one of these circuits by plugging in an accessory that m causes that amperage draw to exceed that amount whatever the computer is expecting to see you're going to have a problem it's going to throw an error your bike may not start may not run correctly i don't know what all the ramifications are but there are issues so these new computerized electronic systems are, are a little more finicky and a little touchier than they were in the past now a word of warning when you install a aftermarket plug-and-play connector to your Goldwing that is not protecting or bypassing the CAN bus electrical system you're still drawing power from those circuits the only way to protect your CAN bus electrical system from either damage or overload oh we have a school zone is is it is school really in session well I see cars at the school I didn't know kids were ever going to school again okay the only way to protect your CAN bus system is with something some sort of isolator now show chrome makes one uh, which you've seen me talk about before uh, row electronics makes one very nice one and uh, there is another one coming on the market very soon uh, that I will be testing and reviewing and talking about but I'm not going to right now so if you have not purchased a isolator fuse block yet 
and you're able to hold off for a couple of weeks, uh, I should have another option for you to consider, hopefully, if everything turns out as I expect. But the bottom line is that the only way to protect your CAN bus is with one of these isolator fuse blocks. Now, how do they work? Well, I'm going to tell you all about that in my video coming up, and I hope to have it up in a few days. So keep checking my YouTube channel. If you subscribe to my channel and click on that little bell icon, you will get notified by YouTube when this video comes out. So you don't want to miss it. So if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do that now. And uh, appreciate all of you that have subscribed. We have now exceeded 26,000 subscribers. Thank you very much for all your support. I'm pulling into the grocery store here because I'm going to do a little shopping this morning. And that is the video that's coming up talking about electronic accessories, lights on your Goldwing. And we're going to do a deep dive on it in that video. Show you what I've done and maybe it'll help you guys with your wiring setup. I see signs as I pull into the grocery store here that in their pharmacy they're having they have free flu shots. That reminds me to ask you, do you get the flu shot? If so, put it in the comments down below. Are you getting the flu shot this year? Also, should there be a vaccine for COVID-19? That almost rhymed, didn't it? But should there be a vaccine for COVID-19, will you take the vaccine? Are you going to submit yourself to get the vaccination for COVID-19? I'd like to know in the comments down below. So anyway, I'm here at the grocery store. I'm going to pull in, park the bike, and I will see you in the next Cruise Man's Motor Vlog. And don't forget to check out my wiring tips video coming up soon. Thanks for joining me today. I'll talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please take a second to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to click the subscribe button and that little bell icon so YouTube will notify you of new videos when they become available.